Well, it is an exciting time here at PMP Energy. Today is May 13th, 2020, and we get to take our NV14 that we have and upgrade it with the NV24 optional battery cabinet. So we're going to show you exactly how we're doing that, giving you all the inside tips. And we're starting off with the tools that you're probably going to need. We'll show you uh, how we've done it and come along, uh, learn as you go. Thanks. Uh, hi guys. Uh, so we're just going to go through the tools that are going to be needed to install the Neo Volta 24. Um, so we have the digital voltmeter that you're going to need, AC DC clamp on current meter, uh, a drill, uh, and then a 3 8 drill bit or a step up uh, drill bit, a tape measure, stud finder, uh, which isn't showed here, um, screwdrivers, Phillips, uh, small blade, uh, this will work. And then we're going to go with the code compliant conduit, conduit and wire, uh, which we'll have over there on the NV24. Um, and then a socket wrench, 1916 socket, and then a hex tool, uh, 530 seconds, and that's just to take the front of the NV14 uh, off, okay? Uh, so we're going to go through on uh, installing the NV24, but the first thing that you want to do is uh, definitely power down the N NV14. Uh, you're going to go to your main service panel. Um, here we have it in our showroom, so this is going to be our main service panel. This is connected to our utility grid. We're going to go ahead and shut that off. Uh, make sure no power is running to that. Um, and then you're going to come over to the um, external um, switch here. You're going to turn that off. That shuts the battery off, the power to the battery. And then you're going to even want to come over here and shut off the uh, inverter. You're going to shut that off and then the little green button that's uh, right next to the inverter, go ahead and push that. Um, once this starts powering down, uh, your display right here will shut down and then you can go to work. So now that we have the power off, it's going to be uh, a lot safer to move around the inverter and down below. So now we're going to take the terminals off. So, um, your negative and positive. Anytime there is power going to these batteries, they won't be able to go into sleep mode. And uh, sleep mode is something that we'll talk about a little bit later. And also, if you've seen our previous video, we talk about the sleep mode in there. So here we go. Um, so after you take the terminals off to the batteries, you're going to want to go ahead and disconnect uh, the communication wires. The, so take those off of each battery. You have two down here, uh, one right here, and then you have your other one. Make sure those are completely off. Um, to get to the screw underneath the inverter where uh, you can land the uh, ground wire, uh, you're going to want to take this battery out and this panel off right here in order to get a screwdriver over there. It's really simple. Um, if you keep the battery in, you're just going to continue the fight with it. So you're going to want to pull that out. This is the uh, bracket that holds the batteries together uh, or in the uh, NV14 secure. Um, you know, for earthquakes and anything else that might happen, these are really secure. So you're going to want to take this bracket off right here and you just do that by taking off these two bolts. So this is where you're going to want to use your trusty Allen wrench that comes into the, the box with NV14. Uh, you're going to take out these four bolts right here and pull that panel off. With the NV14 installation, uh, there was a box inside here when you open it up. Uh, now you guys do remember your trusty little paper clip here to help put it in sleep mode. All the batteries are shipped to you in sleep mode, so you're going to have to take them out that take it out of sleep mode. And then every time that you guys are going to be installing the NV24, I recommend putting it back in the sleep mode. So all you're going to do is there is a hole right on the top that says reset. So you're going to hold that down. Hi guys, so now that you have removed uh, all the power uh, going to the batteries and de-energized the system, uh, we've removed the battery down below. Um, and the reason why we did remove that is because of the ground wire that's going to terminate right here underneath the inverter. And we'll do a close-up shot of that in a second. So once the uh, NV14 is ready, you're going to go back over to your NV24 cabinet. Uh, we've already removed the batteries. Uh, what you're going to find in the NV24 cabinet, once you open up the face, which is right over here, uh, you're going to have ground wire. 
you're going to have your 10 foot of Cat5 cable. Um, and then you're going to have your positive and negative terminals, which are going to run into the NV14. Uh, and we'll show you that in one second. Hi guys, so uh, back here again with the NV24. I have already gone through and pre-drilled an inch and a quarter um, hole right on the NV24. Uh, now this cabinet can go on either side uh, of the NV14. Um, so you have two designated holes right here that you can drill and the same thing on the other side. Um, so we have already pre-drilled these. We have the French cleat in the back. Um, you guys might recognize this from the NV14 installation. Um, this also has the French cleat that you're gonna have to find the lag bolts in the wall. Uh, that's where your stud finder comes in. Uh, make sure you take the time and hit the stud with this. Um, these batteries do weigh a lot and you don't want these cabinets tipping over. Okay, so, so I have chosen this as our conduit going in between the NV14 and NV24. It's an inch and a half um, small little square conduit, which you can get all the wires coming from the NV24 into the NV14 without having any problems. Um, so we're going to just go ahead and take this, install it into our pre-drilled hole set. All right, guys, now that we have installed our conduit in between the NV14 and NV24, um, now we can go ahead and pull off the zip ties that hold all this packaging together. Here are your lag screws um, and your covers. So here are your lag screws with the French cleat on the back. That's going to go into the wall. And you have your white little covers for the screw holes on the face of the cabinet. So you want to make sure that we keep those close by. Now, once you remove all your handy dandy uh, zip ties here that are keeping everything together, you can go ahead and discard those. Now, down here uh, below, you'll notice that you, this is the ground bar, uh, which you're going to take your cable right here, connect it to your ground bar, and then you're going to run it through your conduit uh, up into the inverter right here. So, we'll go ahead and show you that now. All right. How's it looking so far? Pretty easy install, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, in the instruction manual, you'll see pictures here that show where the battery cables go, uh, both the positive cables that are red and the black negative cables. In addition to that, Josh is also showing you the ground cable. So that's the one that's not really shown as well in the instructions, but no fear, we're going to show that to you in our video, and we will continue with the tips and tricks as far as how we're doing it, getting everything ready, uh, have all of this running yet today. Um, so now that you guys, uh, now that we have our uh, ground cable coming over, you're going to notice a screw right above the, uh, well, actually right below the inverter right here. We're going to go ahead and take that out. We're going to crimp on a connection to the end of our ground wire and reconnect. All right, guys, you can see that we do have our ground wire coming through, and we've gone ahead and hooked it up to the bottom of the inverter where the uh, existing ground wire is going. Um, make sure that um, your connection is really tight and a good solid ground. Hi, guys. So uh, now what you're going to do is take your Cat5 cable uh, that came in the package uh, with NV24, and you're going to go... Uh, make sure that you do not uh, damage this in any way, so you want to hear a good solid going into the battery terminal so we're gonna go ahead and do that now so now we have these uh, two bolts right here uh, this is where your uh, negative terminal is gonna land so we're gonna go ahead and loosen these up um, and make sure that we can put those on now that we have our black terminal wire uh, the negative side we're gonna use the uh, side that is not crimped for the bolts uh, and fish that through the conduit it makes it just a little bit easier and here we go. Uh, 
Uh, now that we've fished the negative wire over, uh, we're going to go ahead and land them on the terminal here. And I will do that now with the bolts that we just took out. Now, uh, once you have your negative terminals connected down here, you're going to do the same thing with your positive connections over on this side. Um, and then we'll do that now. Uh, make sure that you're, again, fishing the uncrimped side through. It makes it a lot easier to go through your conduit. All right, now that we went ahead and loosened the bolts, we put our red uh, positive wire on the terminal. Uh, make sure it's about uh, 90 pounds of torque. Make sure that those are really firm in there. And the conduit, it, it's ran through the conduit over to the other side of the NV24. All right, guys, now that you have the cables pulled across, uh, you're gonna notice that you have a really long uh, positive cable here. Uh, now the NV24 to the NV14, sometimes you might have some obstructions and stuff. So this could be moved over, or like I said, it could be on the opposite side. So you're gonna go on ahead and trim this wire down to put it inside uh, the terminal in the NV24, okay? So, uh, like I said, once you pull the cables through, you're going to go ahead and uh, terminate them here. Uh, make sure that you use a little uh, thinner or skinnier of a screwdriver to get in here. Uh, and just like that, make sure they're all tight. Hi, guys. So, uh, it's very important that you're taking pictures of the top of the battery where the serial numbers are right here. Um, these do get submitted to Neo Volta and uh, NeoVolta uses it as uh, warranty information, okay? So make sure that you're taking the pictures before installing. Sometimes it's hard to get your camera uh, phone in there, so. Now, this is what's in with the instructions. It shows you a possible uh, battery setting on that dip switch for battery four and battery five. However, if you're not doing all five batteries at one time, it's possible that one of the first three batteries might actually have one of these battery settings. So remember in, that each battery has to have a unique uh, dip switch setting so that the inverter knows that it's talking to five different batteries. None of them can have the same setting. So just double check that these settings are not used already with one of the first three and as long as each one has its own independent setting then you're good okay we're almost done here we go uh, now that we have the batteries in uh, we have put the positive and negative terminals on uh, we put the plastic coating uh, cover back over it and we've connected our cat 5 cable um, it really doesn't matter which uh, side is going in, and then you are just running that up and over. Um, one thing that you guys have to remember is either you could preset the batteries with the dip switches, or you can do it while you have it in the cabinet. It does takes a little bit more time to adjust it. Um, and the top, the top um, dip switches, you have one of them up, uh, and then the third one up, uh, and then the rest should be down. And on the lower battery, you have uh, two and three down, and then the rest up. So uh, make sure you just uh, revert back to the directions on that, and there you go. All right, now, now we're going to go ahead and uh, put the power back on from the utility. I'm going to pop that open. Um, it'll show grid up here. You're going to come, come across, turn the external um, switch on. All right, and then you're going to go over to the inverter. Turn this switch on, and then our green button. You'll notice that the inverter is popped back on. And here is the schematic for what we just finished. The original NV14 with the optional NV24 brings it up to 24 kilowatt hour of storage capacity for the home energy storage system. And this schematic is in the instructions for doing that as well. So you don't have to worry about trying to catch that, you know, from my screen. So with that, we want to let you know that uh, PMP Energy, we are here to help you from, you know, the initial concept phase. Uh, what's the best way to do this? 
if the customer's got any special requirements, things like that. As you're doing the installation, you're doing the wiring diagrams, different things, let us know any questions you got. You know, we're here. That's the whole thing. We're here to help you out. So you can just email your questions to me. And one of the things we're going to be doing is as we do these weekly uh, responses to frequently asked questions, if you're the one that sent in the question, we're going to send you a PMP Energy hat. Take care. Have a great weekend.